Greetings comrades, Soviet Gaming here, patch 171 is live on AFK right now, so let's go and take a look at it. So yeah, we are again at the new player screen, so this bug is still here and they haven't fixed it yet and that's kinda sucks. Every time you gotta switch the account and go to Facebook, yes, on Bluestacks you gotta type your account every time, that's annoying. So if you guys don't have this issue, congratulations, you are lucky, if you do, well, you will have to do this every time you switch devices and there is no way around it right now. If you didn't yet, write the message to Lilith so they can fix it. Alright, so we are on our test account. Uh, let's see the new patch, autumn theme and all that stuff. How the autumn looks like. I have a feeling that it looks like the autumn in the last season. Not that much stuff changed. Abyssal Expedition is still coming soon, so we can't really see that. Uh, let's go and see what new stuff we can get from the patch. First of all, 1.8k diamonds, all nice, really good. And since most of the updates will be later, first of all, let's go and take a look at the new hero portraits. Where is our new guy? Oh my god, I'm so hyped. Hypergen. There we go. Zikis. Alright, he looks like Mehira guy over here, really chill. Since I really love cats, that will be probably one of my main heroes. Let's see what he can do. Like, this is a preview of a hero. <laughs> so, right, agility based ranger continuous damage hero. So, we got another damage dealer for the Hyper GN guys. What are his skills? He teleports to the edge of his team side of the battlefield and attacks enemies within the range of Infernal Beam every. 0.13 seconds over a duration of 2 seconds, each beam deals 200% damage to the enemies and additionally reduces the haste of enemies suffering from lethargy effects by 20 points for 5 seconds. Infernal beams will prioritize enemies suffering from the effects of lethargy. Zikis is immune to control effects and damage while using this ultimate ability. And uh, Infernal Beam damage is increased to 260%. Curious looks interesting, although it's really hard to figure out how it works because, like, it's pretty complex skill, right? Next one is Languid Eye. Zikis unleashes a Languid Eye that deals 220% damage to all enemies that it passes through. If the Languid Eye strikes an enemy that is not suffering from the effects of Lethargy, they will begin to suffer its effects. If the Languid Eye strikes an enemy already suffering the effects of Lethargy, they shall be dealt additional damage that is equal to 15% of their max health, but shall not exceed 600% of his own attack rating, which is really cool. Damage will be increased up to 300% and... Uh, 20% uh, of the max health, but 80% of his attack rating on level 4 for the lethargy targeted guys. So, this is one of the enabling skills for the lethargy. We will take a look at it again in the testing. So, um, yeah, I think, like, I read about this hero a little bit already, and lethargy will be his uh, feature, so more skills will be based on that, so you gotta take a closer look at that ability. Another one, Corrosive Indolence. Zikis deals 250% damage to the enemy with the highest attack rate and simultaneously marking them with one Eye of Lethargy. Once the enemy is marked with three Eyes of Lethargy, its lethargic effects are triggered, resulting in the target losing 40 critical rating points as well as suffering 200% damage every 3 seconds. Lethargy effects are removed when an affected enemy uses their ultimate ability. This ability prioritizes enemies that have yet to trigger lethargic effects. At level 2, the damage will be increased to 300%. At level 3, damage dealt to the enemy suffering from the lethargy to 250%. And at 4, enemy crit rating is reduced by 50 points when they are under the lethargy effects. So basically, with this skill, uh, Languid will target the strongest attacker on, of the enemy and kinda dump down his critical rating. I'm not really sure that this debuff will be really good because he need to stack 3 eyes in order to put lethargy on them. But overall it seems really good so we gotta test it out as well. Hatred. When an enemy gets close to Zikis, Zikis proceeds to swipe at them, knocking them backwards, causing them to be stunned for 3 seconds, while dealing to carry 70% damage to them. The affected enemy has their accuracy reduced by 220 points, oh my god, for the following 5 seconds. The cooldown timer for this ability is instantly reset when Zeke's ultimate ability Burning Sight is cast. Uh, the damage will be up to 330% and enemy accuracy lowered by 160 points, which is really, really cool. So that means that this guy most likely won't have anyone standing next to him. So if someone comes to him, he will kind of swipe them away, keep their distance and lower their accuracy by so much and 
This is a good amount of accuracy, 160 points, that's a lot, so they will miss quite a lot after that. So I'm curious if Languid I will target the enemies, like what will be his main target as it passes through the enemies and uh, we will have to test it out to see because this will be the main enabler for Lethargy as far as I understand from the description because this one requires 3 stacks but it will be on the highest enemy attack rating hero. That's really good because that will allow Burn Inside to do a lot of damage and like really interesting mechanics for the hero. Let's go over the signature item. Alright, the basic effect of the signature item is uh, block crit rate increase and enemy suffering from lethargy deal 30% less damage to Ziki. So it's kind of protecting the main guy and uh, making him more tanky. Also, it gives life leech, like the main thingy, it's, uh, it's really cool, so he will life drain. Moreover, at the higher levels, uh, the crit block rate is higher and damage reduction is higher as well, up to 30% crit block rate and 50% lower uh, damage from the lethargy enemies. That's actually 50% damage reduction and it's really, really good. At plus 30, lethargy effects are triggered when target is marked by two eyes of lethargy. This is really good. That will allow your hero to use this corrosive indolence two times and then the enemy will get the lethargy and they will do lower damage to languid and overall will have lower critical rating, which is really nice. And after they will target the highest attack enemy, they will move on to the lower attack rating. So the most uh, damaging enemies will get the lower critical rating, which is really nice. And when this guy will use ultimate, he will lower the enemy haste by 20 points for 5 seconds uh, on the enemies who suffer from lethargy, making them slow and not doing critical, which is, I don't know, pretty good. Let's move on to the furniture. At the start of the battle, the enemy standing directly opposite Zikis immediately starts suffering from lethargy effects. That's really good, that means that like you can place him um, against the strongest enemy hero and he will already have lower critical damage and on the ultimate they will have lower haste, so this is nice. At level 9, the duration of the ultimate ability burning inside is extended to 3 seconds, which will add a lot of damage to him probably. But it won't do that much in terms of the um, support for your team. Basically, it will extend duration of this skill by 1 second, which is 50% more DPS from that, because every 0, 13 seconds it will be 260 damage, so I think that's, that's a pretty good damage increase, but I'm not sure how useful it is yet. So we have the low tier uh, Rune of Trials here right now, so we can actually see how he works. Uh, let's make it one speed so we can see. Yeah, he just throws the eye out, and that's how the... is it the eye? I think that's the eye. They die way too fast, oh my god. <laughs> There we go, so lethargy effect means three eyes, I guess, because like those guys, they're dying so fast. I can't really see what's happening because the enemy's just been destroyed here. But I kinda like his design, I like those eyes on the enemies and they will also do damage on them. Oh. Okay, this is not testing guys, this is not testing, we can't really see anything here. Let's go to this area and actually try to use him on a Raku, so Raku won't be able to do that much damage and put some tanks, so our guys can actually figure out like uh, how, how he works there we go, tanks and healers, that should be fantastic uh, let's go, slow so straight away he debuffs with 3 eyes, 3 eyes means lethargy effects on Raku then, uh, where is his ultimate? Where is he? Oh, he's uh, debuffed by Tessie, god damn it. Raku with his ultimate targeted on him and... Uh, he shouldn't... Oh, on the ultimate, the enemies will lose lethargy effects, guys. Mm -hmm. And we kind of got destroyed here. Let's try this this time. So, basically, mm, on the ultimate, the enemy lethargy effects will disappear, which is not that good because that means, like, he will have to add the effects again. But uh, let's see, I want to see the ultimate, there are two enemies with the lethargy effects and one eye on Laika. I want to see his ultimate right now, if we'll get lucky and have the opportunity to use that. Alright, that's uh, Talin, and now will be our guy, there we go, the ultimate. Yeah, the damage output is kind, kind oh my god, look at that! Have you seen that? That's pretty, pretty good damage right here with those uh, beams. Moreover, they kind of distribute the damage among the enemies, so the guys who got killed won't take the 
too much damage basically they won't be over dps they won't go over their life limit and it will be distributed to other enemies which is really nice let's take a look at the stats good damage right here so uh from the first look that guy looks really neat i kind of look forward to his testing and overall kind of team compositions and everything but from the first look that's pretty cool hero let me know what you think about him in the comments next hype topic are engravings for wilders let's take a look saurus the tree we already showed it to you you already know that but it looks just like that the prices are kind of the same so the price of the engraving will be the same. Uh, let's take a look at the skills, what uh, engraving will add, actually, we'll take, we'll take a look over here. So level 30 will give Sauros uh, burst strikes damage, um, alright, that's that's okay, that's not that crazy. But level 60 will increase his uh, tenacity ability. So yeah, those are this skill burst strikes, higher damage by increasing by 10%, so... I don't think it's that crazy, but it's still pretty good. But this one is bigger, because like tenacity is a uh, pretty important skill for Sauros. So it will add additional percentage to the damage, to the allies buff, and defense rating will be higher. So overall, it's pretty good, but um, the price will be really steep, guys. Moreover, each of those will increase physical peers of the hero, and that will add quite a lot of damage on top of whatever he's doing. So uh, getting those should be pretty important if you are competitive guys and it will also increase your stats on the boss fight specifically for Saurus. for the mage the tree is totally different this is like the tree 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 that one was hammer but this is a tree and uh, for tessie it will be haste so i guess for most heroes it will be haste it will increase your banishment uh, that's interesting that's actually pretty good and getting additional stars will increase haste so interesting i, I kind of like it for nimora same it will be three and uh healing ratio so for each hero the bonuses will be different and uh well we will take a look at that a bit later probably for each hero but yeah the engraving kind of is the same it's just on the tree and the stats will be different for every hero this is Laika, for example i don't know those are good those are all good and i want all that but the prices of the engraving are insane guys so i'm not really sure how we should go from this so expect further videos on that because um, i have to think about it and decide what do we have to do with those prices because those are pretty steep this is pipa here for example for pipa it's really big because um level four will allow all enemies within range are stunned for five seconds that means that torrent cheese will be able to do like way better because Toron will have more downtime time over there and he will be able to use his retaliate earlier like he won't die during that time this is this is really good guys Raku will have package ability longer and Raku's mark whoo whenever an enemy target is under the effect control ability Raku will additional target them with his normal attack over the next six seconds that's really interesting so those bonuses are good guys those are good Aaron let's take a look at Aaron uh, damage for Vortex, uh, it's good, but then again, not a crazy 10% bonus. And here, 65% chance to ignore enemy defense ratings. I think you can't uh, can ignore that because you can go over, uh, you know, the repeats and RNG will do its thing. A physical pierce as well. So, so yeah, guys, some heroes will be ranked higher than others. For example, Lorsan doesn't have that much of a value from his uh skill levels, let's put it like that, but he will get additional haste from the getting those skills and if he have stars and that will be big so uh we will have to decide on each specific hero now there is a change in the rosaline's movement effect i was really curious what it will be how it will look like and it's nothing really crazy just uh you won't have to change it here where the artifacts are you just change it on your screen so basically it's the same stuff but the um, area where you pick the target will move and you can actually see it quite easily like it's easier to navigate because you can see the portrait who will uh, who she will follow right on top of her so pretty nice so now the hero growth bundles i think those kind of work only for the pay to win options on the right because on the left i don't see any course right now or anything so maybe it will be after the ascended tier don't know i don't have the heroes that high uh, but yeah let's take a look uh we have the twisted essence here or there we go eternal choice chest so you have option on the ascended tier to get uh either 1000 twisted essences or 1000 of elemental shards or 500 of elemental cores which is pretty interesting option uh on the mythic plus 
you have the same option. Oh my god, it's even more. Uh, 16 times 10, 1.6k of those, 16 times 5. Not really sure, but quite a lot as well. I don't want to calculate right now. Just too early for that. On the mythic, uh, normal rewards. And over here, you have the gear. Or you can go for course as well. So, kind of pay to win, guys. We'll get more access to the course. That's just what they wanted but that's not what i wanted that's not what free to play guys want we want to have ability to get those scores over here on the left give them as additional rewards somewhere like here and here add some extras don't be greedy god damn it all right so yeah i think it's only starting from mythic tier right no legendary plus so on legendary plus you already started getting those scores before that uh probably not Probably not. Yeah, before that you don't get those. So uh, if you building up a new hero, you can you can you need him to get him to legendary plus, then buy the bundle, and each of those is buying separately, right? So you don't really buy all of those like a. Oh my god, that's expensive and crazy. Yeah, I, I never bought those, so I have no idea. Let me know in the comments if I'm right. So you gotta buy each of those individually, right? So it's not like. You buy the Hero Growth Bundle for the Hero and you get all of those. Yeah, probably not. Probably not that. Prices are different. God damn, that's so expensive. <laughs> oh, why? Anyway, so if you want to get more of those scores, you can buy them over here from this chest. Uh, you can go either for... Oh my god, that's a lot. 90... Uh, 90 Emblem Choice Chests. 90. Or 1.6k of Elemental Shards and Elemental Cores. That's insane, guys. And the price for all those, like the higher the tier, the higher the price. No, this one, a Legendary Plus, is more expensive. Uh, this is priced in rubble, so I'm not sure. This is like $50, I think, something about that, maybe $35. The, those are cheaper, like $30, I think. This one is more expensive again. So uh, the prices are kind of weird. I don't know how to change the prices on the Google Store to dollars. I'm tired of those rubles. I don't buy it anyway, but... Nothing can do about that. And the last but not least, the new campaign level somewhere out here. Oh my god, the new island. I never saw that. The Blissful Castle. There we go. You can get here and uh, get really good rewards when you will be able to get here and claim it and clear it. 45. Oh my god. <laughs> that's far, far away. But uh, yeah, guys, I think that's uh, all I can show you right now. Stay tuned for uh, Hero Breakdown, for the Bountiful Trials, for the Abyssal Expedition, and all the new stuff. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss that. Also, join the Discord. I have the notifications there. We have really good community out there, so you might join that and get into the discussion with guys. And yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about this video. Uh, like it, share it with your friends and guildies. Join the Discord, guys. It's important. Join the Discord. Nice place to be. I want to build a great community there. And I can do it alone without you. So you guys can talk to each other over there in real time. YouTube comments are nice as well. But I mean, it's not that active. So yeah. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. This uh, page is really nice. Looking forward to new content. And uh, that's about it for now. So it out. До свидания. Это кожа, блядь. Хоба. Хоба, бля, на Руслабоне надо быть немного. Хо-хо-хо.